Hey, and welcome back to Better Done Yourself. Today on Better Done Yourself, salsa. I'm gonna do a fermented salsa. I've been going to the um, farmer's markets and I've been keep seeing tomatillas. Tomatillas, if you don't know, for the uninitiated, are kind of like little tomatoes with these papery husks on them. And you see them at the, the farmer's market and you, you're not really sure what they are or what the, to do with them. They're really delicious. They make great salsa. Um, they're not spicy, they're not anything like that. They've got a little, just, you know, maybe one out of ten on the, on the heat scale. But I love these things. And they make wonderful salsa. You just um, chop them up with a little bit of onion, a little bit of pepper, and some garlic. You can throw in some tomato. Um, I kind of prefer the, the crunchier ingredients. But it, makes, it comes out delicious. You can uh, end up with a real pretty finished product. This is, uh, this is what, we're, what we're shooting for. And... I've seen a lot of recipes where people like to make like the, you know, hot pepper sauce and salsa ferments and different vegetable ferments and they chop everything up really fine. This obviously has been through the food processor. And the problem is as it ferments you get air bubbles in it and the air bubbles push everything up and out. If you use an airlock then everything is going to come up through the airlock and it doesn't work really well. So the key is what I'm going to do, I'm going to show you right now, is cut everything up really coarsely, put it in the salt brine. Let it ferment like that, pour off the brine, and then chop it. And then I think you get a really nice product without all the mess, without all the overflow and all the problems of trying to ferment a sauce. You know, I, I just don't think it works well to ferment a sauce. So I like to ferment my vegetables and then run them through the food processor, and then we'll have something delicious. So I've seen a lot of people where they like to, uh, when they do their tomatillas, they, they uh, blanch these, they'll boil them, and it, it's really not necessary. They, um, they've got the little papery husks on them, and this pop right off, and they're sort of sticky underneath. There's like this kind of, but it's, it's not anything to really get concerned with. I think what I like to do is just sit, literally just, you know, take the papers off, make myself a little pile, and not really worry about the rest. Remember, we're fermenting. We don't, you know, these came from an organic farmer, so I know there's no pesticides on them. They grow on a, on a big tomato looking plant, a big, you know, viney looking plant. Um, so there's no dirt on them. So there's no reason to wash them. They've got lots of natural probiotic bacteria on them. And you don't really have to worry about what you're getting into. I mean, even if you did spray them, they're completely enveloped in these little paper wrappers. So I'm just taking them right out of the wrappers and I don't need to worry about washing them. And I think I get lots of nice bacteria. Here, let me finish just peeling these really quick for you guys. There you go. So it really doesn't take very long. And they are definitely sticky. You get that stickiness. Um, not a big deal. That's just typical for tomatillas. We're gonna, these are kind of small. They'll fit in our ferment. I want to cut them in half or maybe in even quarters. Just break them down a little bit. And then what I'm gonna do is just kind of load up my jar here. I've got a, just a canning funnel and a half gallon jar. But literally just, um, just a real easy chop on them. I mean, you don't need the canning funnel, obviously. You can put up your jar without. But definitely, we want to cut everything in half. We want to expose this, the inside to our, our fermenting bacteria. So we've got, you know, we've got to get into these each. But just chop, chop them in half. Load up your jar. I have poor aim, so I like the funnel on there. All right, those are good. What else do I like? Maybe a little bit of pepper just for some color. You can use, I'm just gonna use a bell pepper, but you can use like a jalapeno, you can use some Anaheim peppers, you can go as hot as you want. Heck, you can get some of those uh, Thai peppers, cut those up, put them in, uh, whatever you like. I'm, like I said, we just do a nice mild chili. So, get the, get the seeds out. I find that I like to get all the seeds out and this white membrane is really bitter. Um, in a hot pepper it, it's really hot. In a sweet pepper it's not sweet, it's really, it's really kind of bitter. So cut out all this white part and you'll be happier. Um, let me just break it down a little bit, not a little bit. Just so it fits in the jar. These parts do not go in. 
Cut your, cut your seed cap out. Cut your white membranes out, seeds out. And then, again, just, you know, small enough to fit in the jar. You don't need to chop it up, don't need to grind it. Just fill up your jar. Next ingredient, some uh, garlic. Gotta love, I love garlic. I put garlic in all my ferments, I think. Well, maybe not all. I, there was no garlic in the apple, surprisingly enough. Thank you to my viewers that were concerned with my carpal tunnel syndrome. Sorry about that. To, um, to peel your garlic, if, you, if the garlic's a little bit dry, you can literally just crack it out of the, the paper, and then it, it peels right off. You can, if you, if you want to put a lot of garlic in, watch the, the garlic making video. It was my first YouTube video. If you want to see me back in the, in the golden days of my YouTube channel, watch the, watch the garlic making video. Yeah, it's kind of hilarious. But again, it, it's, it's all to taste. Um, the, the garlic, you're, you're probably thinking, boy, that's a lot of garlic. Garlic gets really mild when you ferment it. And this, is, this garlic clove isn't good. Garlic gets really mild when you ferment it, and it really comes out nice when you, when you put it in some of these vegetable ferments. So don't, don't get too excited about using too much garlic. It really, it really mellows right out. Hot peppers, on the other hand, do not. I find that a lot of people's ferments, they you know, throw a couple of hot peppers in thinking that they're going to cool them off, and um, they really don't. I find that garlic mellows out. Peppers really don't. So careful with the peppers. Next on my list is some onion. Onion ferments, really nice. Onion, I don't think you could really eat a, a raw onion very easily, but fermented onion really gets nice and mild, has a nice taste to it, and I think it, it does really well in ferments. I was thinking about maybe next time I do cucumbers and make some pickles, I wanna chop up an onion and throw it in there. I think that might be a, a nice change from the, from the dill. But here, I'm not gonna, do any kind of a julienne on these. Literally, just enough to get it in the jar. Press. Pack it all in there. No. Boy, you know me and onions. Can't cope. I'll never be a good chef if I can't handle the onions. So as usual, you're making a, a fermented vegetable, pack everything in there. It's all going to shrink after it's fermenting for a while, but get it in there. And you need some kind of a weight. You need, I love these, pickle bubbles. These things are awesome. It's basically like a half inch disc of glass that fits just right inside the, the jar. Pack that in there. When you're fermenting, you don't want anything to float up. We're gonna pour brine over this, and we wanna make sure that there's nothing exposed to the air, because that anything that's touching air, so much as a little seed, is gonna be a little island for the mold to start to grow on. And we can't have that. We don't want any mold. We just want a nice ferment. So, we got our jar lined up. Brine. My brine recipe is a quart of water to a tablespoon and a half of salt. So get some kind of a nice sea salt. Get, um, you can use pink salt, like the Himalayan salt. You can use sea salt. Don't use canning salt. Don't use um, iodized salt, table salt. That iodine, it's gonna kill the, the bacteria. Not, not a good thing. So one and kind of a, kind of a half there. And um, fill up your your salsa jar here. And like I said, we need to exclude air from whatever we're fermenting. We want to make sure that we get the air out. Air is our enemy. Air makes bad tastes, makes mold, makes 
problems. So just shake the air out of there. You still see a couple bubbles. And we're ready. Here, let me steal this lid. Just a plastic cap. Not tight. Don't crank this on there. We because this is like I said, it's gonna make it's gonna create carbon dioxide, just like everything else we ferment. It's gonna create carbon dioxide as the, the fructose in these vegetables um, breaks down and creates the acid that's gonna pickle these. It's going to give off carbon dioxide. And we want that carbon dioxide to be able to get out of the jar and not completely explode the jar. So this is just to keep the dust out, keep the cat out. This will put away into uh, some place where it won't get disturbed. Get more of those. There's a lot of bubbles in there. We'll put this where um, it can just relax for three, four days. And depending on how tart you like it, how pickly, how, how much acid you want in your salsa, you're going to want to let it go longer. So I'd say maybe four or five days, let this sit. And then, you know, after a couple of days, nudge the the weight out of the way and just grab an onion and give it a taste and see does it taste like a raw onion with salty water on it or does it taste like kind of a mild onion with a little bit of maybe like a vinegar like a, that acid taste that tart taste is it starting to taste fermented is it pickled um and then once you get it to uh that kind of pickled flavor that we're going for we're ready to, to make sauce out of it so here let's put this away and we'll come back to this in about a week but like I said, you know, give it a taste, keep, keep, uh, keep your tongue on it, and um, we'll taste this in a couple of days and see where we're at. All right, we've done it. We've waited a week. You know, we've, I, I tasted these a couple of days ago, but it's been literally seven days. And, you know, just pop the top up like I mentioned, check for any mold, I don't see any, and then just kind of reach down in here. You can see all the bubbles coming up. Got a nice ferment going. Um, grab an onion, or whatever. How's it taste? Smack your mouth a lot. Get those tastes in there. I taste acid. I taste the acetic acid from the lactobacters. I taste a little bit of onion, but it's a nice strong pickle. I've got that ferment. So usually, you know, you would make a, a salsa and you would chop up your vegetables, some oil and vinegar and whatever you like to put in your salsa. This, no oil, no vinegar. I've got the acid from the ferment. So, this is going to be great. And what I want to do is just strain this brine off. Remember, you can put some of the brine in the sauce. It's just going to make it watery. You don't need it. So I'll spill most of it, and then uh, we'll drain this off. You can see that the color change in the tomatillas are just a very um, kind of an olive green now, a light olive green. So you can tell we've had a good ferment going on in this jar. Take the pickle pebble out. And this is where I want to, this, now that I've got everything fermented, I don't have to ferment this anymore, I can do my, my chop. Just a couple of pulses. Now we're not making soup, we're making salsa, so I want to do, I want just kind of a, a, Fairly coarse grind, I guess, but, you know, chop up the big pieces. I'm going to be able to pick this up on my chips. That looks good. And you can see that I've got, you know, fairly fine texture, but, you know, not anything too damaging. Just a nice, fine salsa mix. Let's get the rest of this in there. But you can see... Got a nice looking salsa. I always use this same spatula when I'm digging around in the in the work bowl when I've got the blade in there because it really jacks up the edges of your spatula. So I always just make sure I use the, the same spatula so I don't ruin all my spatulas. Alright, add the rest of the veggies. And we'll do the same thing. Get these chopped up. Knock down the sides. And 
can see where we are with these. That was the, the pepper and the onions. Here's the rest of the tomatillas. Kind of a neat plating option. You could put it out like that if you want to. Maybe drain some of this liquid off. I just like to stir it all together. And you've got a beautiful, fermented, highly probiotic, healthy salsa. A real nice uh, Mexican treat for your family and friends. And what a great way to eat fermented foods. I mean, as a salsa like this, I could eat the whole bowl of this stuff probably. It's nice, like, I made mine real mild. You know, if you want, you can put some hot peppers in it, make it a little bit more of a challenge to eat, but I like it just like this. To have some corn chips, mmm. And this is lovely, you know, it's got a nice bright taste, it's got that, that um, lactic acid in, it's got the taste of the, of the vegetables that we put in. No real strong garlic, you know, no peppers, you know, hot peppers that we did. This is, this is delicious. This is, uh, I think, the way to go with fermented foods for me. Thanks for watching, you guys. Enjoy your salsa.